second time. The show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. As South Africa finally gets set to make the shift from coal to renewables, the debate on how to make the just transition is intensified. Terence Greenman joins me to unpack this concept further. Hi, Terence. Hi, Chanel. Why is there such concern about the transition to renewables and about making it a just transition? Well, I think South Africa has been a coal dominant country for so long. So there was initially concern, I think, about whether technically it was possible to transition to renewables. But I think those sort of fears are being allayed more and more as many countries around the world have high levels of penetration of renewable energy, variable renewable energy, and find a way to complement that with flexible generators so that we have a stable electricity supply. So now the, there's this inevitable transition happening driven by climate change uh, policy, as well as the cost decline in solar and wind in particular. So the, the, the focus is shifting to what the social consequences of transitioning from coal to renewables will be. We know we've got a lot of people in South Africa either linked to coal mining directly or to coal-fired power stations through Eskom or through transporting coal, whether that's at the railway companies or the coal transporters. So there's a fear that these workers and then the communities surrounding uh, these coal uh, facilities can be left behind in this transition. And there's a view that because the transition is a, mostly a, it's a multi-decade type shift, there is time uh, to put some uh, thought into how to make sure that the transition is a just one for those workers and for those communities uh, so that there isn't the situation where uh, those towns become ghost towns and those workers are abandoned. Is there a unified vision for what a just transition should look like? No, there's no unified vision for a just transition in South Africa. Some see it narrowly as just uh, extracting ourselves out of coal as quickly as possible and replacing our electricity system with variable renewable energy plants backed by flexible generators. Others see it as a way of uh, heralding in a massive social change, dealing with South Africa's poverty, inequality problems and unemployment problems, and also changing the ownership structure, not just through private RPPs, but having socially owned facilities, having community-based ownership having continued state ownership. So maybe even seeing this as part of a, uh, a, a, a socialist revolution. And then the others that see the just transition as a way of that delaying the introduction of uh, renewable energy, because the argument is to say that there's just too many people at risk uh, in, in the, because of the uh, uh, workers involved and communities involved in fossil fuels. And we should therefore delay the introduction of uh, renewable energy as part of the just transition. So you can see there's no really unified voice or vision at all in South Africa. And even around the world, I think the countries are still struggling with this. What we do know is that with the Paris Agreement, that this just transition concept is actually embedded in the way countries need to deal with their transition to climate resilient economies and societies. So it's something we have to think about and we ultimately have to do. How should South Africa go about preparing the way for a just transition? Well, I think building consensus around a vision for the just transition is important. Now, as I mentioned, there's very divergent views of what a just transition is, and therefore we can't have full consensus. But I think it's going to be about building sufficient consensus around that uh, vision. And uh, there has already been some important work done by the National Planning Commission drafting a policy document or framework document around this. And we also uh, have learned that the cabinet has endorsed and approved the formation of the Presidential Coordinating Commission on Climate Change. And I think that's going to be the place where uh, the vision not only is forged, but also where implementation very much important now is to start implementing projects around the just transition so that there's some practical expression of what this means. So at the moment, it's very much a concept, uh, even, even could be said an academic concept. And we now need to practicalize this in the form of policy and then ultimately have programs of action. And I think there is a big opportunity, given that uh, the new Eskom CEO 
set up a just energy transition uh, uh, platform within the organization to use the decommissioning program that is now underway at Eskom uh, to find ways of, of cushioning the blow to workers and communities around those power stations. But again, as I said, it has to be broader vision. It has to be uh, bringing as many components of society into the vision. And particularly, we need to start hearing the voice of those that are most affected. So we hear the academics, we hear Eskom's voice, we hear RPP's voices, we hear government's voice, but more and more, I think some uh, outreach needs to be held with those communities that are most affected, with those workers that are most affected, uh, so that we can have a program of action that has as much buy-in as possible. Thank you. That's the second talk show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.